Pa, živi, govori ga. Ne, živi sluša. 3, 2, 1, and we're live. We're live. Welcome back. Welcome to Lionscapes, everybody. Today we have an exciting topic to for you, and this is sketching with watercolors. Yeah. We're going to do an amazing uh, painting, so to say, and yeah, I'm excited. So, what I, you need to do is get your watercolor paper, your watercolors ready, your pen ready, um, and we'll tell you in many times something about the structure uh, of today's live stream, what we'll go through, what we'll tell you. But first of all, we want to tell you why we are starting these live streams again, right? Mm -hmm. So, what is it? <laughs> We're doing this live stream because we are reopening Creative Compass membership program. And since we want to attract the right crowd, we are doing this live stream. So we would like to share more about this offer, about this amazing thing that we're doing. And yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, so by the end of the stream, we'll tell you something about it. And uh, this is a program for, to, you know, for everyone who wants to become a confident sketcher. In the program, you will learn to improve your techniques, but also your creative mindset. And yeah, we'll tell you more about it after we do the sketch. And in the end, we'll do some Q&A. You can ask us anything about the sketch, about watercolors, uh, process, whatever. So stick with us. Um, I'll switch to top down. And okay. maybe, Sonia, you tell us what tools are we going to uh, use today. Very well. OK, so today you will need, today you will need a watercolor paper. Today I'm using 200 gram uh, watercolor paper, which is a bit thin, but since we're doing urban sketching with watercolor, that's fine as well. Um, and it's not one of the most expensive papers. It's in size A5 format, approximately a bit bigger. Then I am using my favorite watercolor set by Selenier. Um, it looks like this. And, of course, we are also using some ink pen. Um, I have different ones uh, by brand Pilot, V7 and V5 V-Ball pen. So these are good because they're watertight, right? Right. First we're going to do the watertight sketch and then afterward we're going to color it in. If you don't have the water um, watertight or water resistant resistant um, pen, then I suggest you use a bit softer pencil maybe. Um, make sure just that it does not bleed. Um, and in addition to that, we are also using brushes. You can use a water brush like this one, or you can use just normal brushes. I prepared here three sizes of brushes in small, medium and large. You can go even smaller. It depends on your painting style. Um, beside that, we also have a normal pencil, a glass of water, and some paper towels. All right, this is amazing. So, um, I guess if everybody's ready, you can let us know in the live stream. Give us a yes if you're ready. We have people tuning in from all over the world today. Um, it's amazing to see. And without further ado, we will jump into the process. Okay, amazing. So, um, right, I'm just going to organize my things on the paper, as you, you sh should as well. Um, usually what's very important is that you have your watercolor set somewhere where you can reach it. Beside that, you should definitely place a glass of water. Um, and then on the other side, I usually place my brushes so that I can see them. Um, and the paper towel is usually best placed somewhere nearby, positioned in the lower part. So first of all, what we're going to do, we're going to do the outline with, with, um, with a pen. What are we sketching today? So as we said, we're going to do an urban sketch with watercolors. Um, besides here, you can see also the the photo that I prepared for you. It's an urban scene, right? So it's something that you would typically see 
if you would do an urban sketch. Urban if you're sitting in a cafe, summer in vacation. Right, that's the thing. The urban sketch is usually like a a diary entry or it's like a sort of visual report. Um, it's not necessary that it's very spatial, but it needs to communicate a certain information. So maybe here we have this um, background, which is not so beautiful, but in the foreground we have this cafe or a restaurant and someone is eating there. But the most interesting part are the, are the lights and the green um, surrounding it. So we're going to do first a, a outline um, and then we're going to color it in. Later on, when everything dry, dries, you can still add some details on your own. Okay, so first what you're going to do, you're going to create a frame. And that's just because, um, because you have then a bit more space. Um, you can always you can always paint till the borders or to till the edge of your paper. Um, the thing is just every time when you paint till the edge of your paper, you you will probably also paint on your table or in your desk. So since I don't want to do that today, I'm gonna just paint the square as well. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the outline here. So um, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with just a few considerations. So first of all, what's very important in this sketch is the, the composition, right? So we have here the frame, which is green. We have this plant that's climbing on the facade and then we have some, um, we have some sort of umbrellas, right? Mm -hmm. the, the blue parts with the lights. And this is basically occupying this part and then on the side, it's like very, very clear composition. And then if you see the person sitting there, maybe we should start with this person here since he is dictating the space around it, right? We want to build some sort of tension around this person, around this user who's using this space. So that's why I will fo focus first on this part here. And I will just very fast now, I mean, um, when we start sketching, I would like to say, don't, don't focus on detail too much, just start sketching. And don't occupy yourself with forms. It's basically just an information for you. Um, and I, I will also be very imprecise, okay? So this is the hair that I just created. I'm gonna do an ear here. I did a funny nose and then I'm very fast, kind of move toward his t-shirt, his hands and his his back. I love how you're basically drawing shapes. Like you said, the hair was like a shape. You know, his t-shirt was a shape. I think it really helps when, when sketching or painting, or drawing in general, to think of the objects you see as shapes. Yeah, right. Um, and it's also very practical because when you're using watercolors, you cannot paint too detailed things, right? Especially if, you're, if your format, your paper is too small. So that's why do the outlines and then color them in. And in the end, when you edit the color, figure out if there's any, anything missing, like any additional um, details and stuff. So don't, don't start with filling your your sketch with too many details. Um, at this point, it's not too important. What I'm looking at is like, you know, uh -huh, okay, so if these are his hands um, the, uh, and uh, the elbows, the elbows are in the height of this table here. Um, there's like something on the table with some vegetation. I love what you just did, like you compared the other elements to the, the person you just created and you know, you saw that the table is the height of the elbow and that's how you get the proportions right, is it? Uh, yeah, um, that's, that's what, I'm, what I'm doing constantly, right? I'm gonna, through the whole process, I'm gonna look at the elements and then compare them to other elements and this is how I'm gonna build the whole surrounding um, 
in this in this photo or in this sketch that I'm creating. So I'm gonna do this additional leg and then here we have a chair. I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a very fine chair with some heart. I think it's like a heart shape. And what I'm focusing on is like that the, this sitting surface is on the same height at, at, as the other sitting surface, right? So maybe it's even better if we start with the sitting surface. We sketch that first. And then I know that here is like a very funny heart shape. I'm gonna do that as well because it's just so kitschy. <laughs> but somehow you know every time when you do when you do your vacation and then you see an element which is a bit kitschy somehow you you tolerate it much easier right i mean if it's your hometown and you see something which is like too sweet and too uh, over designed and you can easily say ah that's a bit too much but when we do vacation usually we go with it and we say oh you know this is like something extra it gives us an extra flair Maybe just because we're more relaxed on vacation, everything just seems better. Yeah, it could be. You know, wine in Italy tastes better than wine that you bring home from Italy. <laughs> True, it tastes differently, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I'm moving on to this this part here. And as you as you notice, I'm also not paying attention to the to the exact proportions. I am emphasizing maybe the materials or the the spacious element of it. Oh, what I just remembered is that I forgot to, to sketch the legs of this man. So that would be a mistake. So let's do this very fast as well. And the other leg as well, so that it won't look like that he's without a leg or something. Okay, so what do we have here? So we, we also, we already created the men and then the composition of sitting elements here. Of course, there's a lot going on, right? But I hope we're gonna somehow reduce it to even more um, and make it even more abstract. So here, what I see very clearly are also a few of the, of the, the glasses, some bottles and stuff. I think I'm gonna... I'm going to sketch those elements here as well. And then on the right side, we have a few chairs. Let's, let's put a chair or two uh, beside him. And you can see it's like where the shirt meets his pants. There, there, that's the, where the, the legs of the chair are positioned. And then the the sitting surface is positioned somewhere here, so on the height of his t-shirt. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna very quickly do this outline as well and maybe add an additional chair here in the background, maybe another top of the table and another chair. So uh, may I ask you something? Yeah, of course. So what's, once again, what is your process going to be? You started off with a pen. Mm -hmm. And what are the rest of the steps going to look like? So in the first steps, we're go step, we're going to do the outline. When we, do, when we finish the outline, um, I'm going to start working with color. And first, we always do a basic layer of color. And after the basic layer is done, then we start adding details, maybe deepen the color um, and maybe use different different types of brush so that the um, so that the the information gets interesting and that that it's not so flat. Um, you can also use different different techniques to um, to add texture. So we're going to focus on that as well. How can we create additional texture? Um, but I mean, through this whole process, what we also need to consider is that, um, that it's very important um, to, to abstract, right? 
and to, to color in just the elements that are important to us. So we can easily do two things, right? We can say, okay, wow, of course I can see colors. That's why I need to color in the whole paper or my whole sketchbook with color and paint. Or you can say, okay, um, I want to emphasize one thing in this particular view that I'm trying to depict. And by just chose, choosing the things that I would like to, to focus on and emphasizing those with colors, I would, I would give it an, an extra layer or extra information, right? Um, I would say that would, if I use color just on particular parts, that means, okay, this is something that I wanted to, to, to let you know. This is something that was interesting to me. Um, and that's something that we're going to try to discover as well. So how can, we, um, how can we focus just on a few elements that are truly important to us? Um, and those elements will say stories, like why did we decide to, to paint something? and leave something out. So if you have any questions during the process and you're watching this live, then you know write them in the chat. In the end, we'll do a Q&A. And if you're watching this at a later point, you can also leave us a question in the comments and we'll answer it for you. I'm curious if you're, uh, if you're painting with us or you're going to go step by step at your pace uh, through the process later. Yeah, I hope you're uh, you're sketching along. So this is why it's it's a sketch. Uh, it's a combination of a sketch and a painting, right? So Dra what was it called? Drawing and painting, drainting. Drain I heard once. Yeah. Drainting, yeah. <laughs> because it can be a drawing, right? And and in the same time also a a painting. Um, what I'm adding now are uh, just a few lines that will emphasize the, the light bulbs, right? And if you can see, the light bulbs first are attached to this plastic square. I'm just going to sketch a few squares <laughs> like this. And then I'm going to attach attach to those squares a few circles. And this will immediately work as an as a, a element that we will recognize as a light bulb, right? This will look at it. I mean, you can see it immediately. <laughs> look at it. Look at it. It really looks good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So what I think can be also added here is definitely the name of this restaurant here, Kinza. It's a Georgian kitchen. Yeah. Um, yeah. We all, we always wanted to go to Georgia, right? So this is the Georgia in the in the in the Middle East, no, not the Middle East. It's it's on Caucasus, I think. I don't know. It's between the Caspian and the Black Sea, right? I guess this is the the country Georgia uh, and their traditional food. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I added this part. I'm gonna try to color in the rest and the Georgian kitchen. For me, that's just a bit too small. If you uh, are sketching a bit bigger, then you can probably also squeeze that in as well. It depends on how much time you have. If you imagine you're sitting somewhere like there and you have still time, you can, you can very easily do that as well. But I'm going to leave that go. Um, what I will do for sure right now before I start to apply watercolors is just add a bit of, of texture. Um, on dark elements. So by that I will also um, create a bit of contrast. So here I am focusing just on a few elements, um, maybe here the shade of, of this tree here, like this climbing tree. Um, I'm gonna just add a bit of it like here on this side as well okay what we can do as well is um, maybe add some texture to the tree trunk I'm gonna add a few a few of, of the lines okay 
Um, yeah, and just add a few leaves. We can add the leaves later on as well. Um, so I think we're ready to start painting. All right. So everyone, I hope you're enjoying this. If you haven't managed to sketch it until the end, don't worry, you can still add and finish it later. Um, I would suggest you grab your watercolors if you're painting along and follow Sonia. Um, you can still rewatch the video, it will stay online. And if you're watching this you know, on replay, then you can go through it at your pace anyhow. I would like to uh, invite you to like the video and share it if you think uh, it was a nice experience so other people and your friends that are also interested in sketching and creativity uh, also learn about sketching with watercolors. Okay, yes, you should definitely do that. But if you're wondering <laughs> what I'm doing right now, what I did was apply some water to, to watercolor paint. By that I activated the pigment and now um, I can use it, right? Now it, it's a bit more pigmented um, um, and intense and now I can take a bit smaller brush um, so that I have a bit more precision when I start mixing pigment together. And if you see what kind of colors do we have in this second step when we start applying paint, first of all, we will fo focus on applying like um, an even layer, right? We're gonna do some, so to say, a flat wash. We're gonna try to apply just one color of paint. And then we're gonna start deepening the, the color. Um, this really depends now what kind of um, this speed, the process, the speed, it depends on how, what kind of paper you're using. Um, and um, yeah, so if you're using very absorbent paper, that means that you're gonna need to paint faster. If you're using paper that does not absorb water as fast, then, um, then you, you can paint a bit slower. Um, it also depends how warm your apartment is right now. So many reasons. Many reasons. If you're sketching outdoors somewhere in Scandinavia, then yeah, it will be pretty cold. And I hope you're not. <laughs> I hope you're somewhere warm and you can enjoy your sketching process. Yeah. Okay, so I will definitely start with... So um, this is diluted. I'm using this color, so it's like some sort of ashy. It's not black, but it it's very dark color. Um, it's on the warm side as well. Um, and um, and I'm gonna use this color. I diluted it a lot, like it's very diluted, um, because I just want to apply it and maybe then also add a few other colors. So I'm painting over the chairs. Um, and also I'm painting this chair here. I'm not painting over the clothes of this man. Okay. Continuing. I will definitely paint over those chairs here in the foreground and also over this, 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 the whole thing in the background. And what else? I have here some sitting elements. I'm gonna paint over those as well. Okay, so basically the, the lower part is very dark. It's grayish and stuff. And if you notice that you, you added too much paint, you can still, you know, dry the brush and then start removing a bit of the paint. This is always something that you can do. You see, yeah, paper towel is magic. It's uh, I didn't know that before, but like Sonia showed me, it's really essential for sketching and painting with watercolors. Yeah, it really is. Okay, so you can see that there in the in the lower part, there are some some leaves, some dry leaves on the on the ground, and um, I suggest we add a bit of orange pigment, just so that we have like. That it's not boring, you know. It's so that it's like th that it it has a bit more diversity, a bit of texture. This will give it a bit more of somehow liveliness. 
Mm, it looks beautiful. Even now, already it looks so. It beautiful. already looks oh, beautiful. Ugh. Amazing. I think your your must look as well very beautiful already, right? How how are you doing? Let us know how how are you proceeding through this process. Okay, so this this is what we did, and now we're gonna move slowly upward. When we move upward, we see we have three different colors or three main colors. We have green, we have blue, and some sort of um, it's creamy white. It's creamy white. But maybe we can do it since we already used this orangey color. We can maybe dilute it even more and add a bit of this orangey color. And by that we're gonna make this painting a bit more warmer um, and maybe a bit more interesting. Mm -hmm. So as you see, since I am not painting extremely precise, this gives me also the permission to, to express myself. Right? I mean, I can, I can really mix it up. I can, I can really create my own color scheme, basically, my own colors. So it doesn't have to be exactly one-to-one -one thing you're seeing. No, that's the thing. The thing is when, when we sketch elements and when we do urban sketching, right, um, you can emphasize things, elements, colors that are important to you. So if you say like, oh, they had amazing decoration, or the facade or the windows were the same exact color as the surrounding, then you can you can always depict those kind of elements and it will truly make everything pop up if you focus on just one element. So that's why today when you start building this sketch, right? Don't don't build it with color like all over, right? Don't do hundred percent colored in painting. Um, I, I suggest instead of that that you really focus on um, more on on the things that you like okay and now we have I will now add the blue elements and then I will start with with the green so we have this kind of very interesting blue it's a blue color but since I'm going to also use green, I really like to connect colors by mixing them, right? So now you can see that I added a bit of this very light green. Um, I could also add a bit of this orangey yellow and I would create similar color here, similar um, intensity and also lightness. It would also be very bright. Um, and I think this is like a nice color to use. I'm going to take it. Um, and and first color in the umbrellas here and I'm first focusing on on the umbrellas because um, the paper will start drying out um, and when I come to the green layer to the vegetation it will it will already dry a bit and by that it won't bleed as much right bleeding is an effect when you when two colors that stand near to each other create this flowery effect it's here right we we started with with brown and then added a bit of yellow and because they were near or lying to each other next to each other the color started to bleed um, and that's a nice effect uh, that you can e always take advantage of. Um, I know that in one of our videos we said like that's something that's not 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 a good thing, right? That we recognize that something that's um, that's maybe not wished, um, but actually you can do whatever you want. You can create whatever effect you want um, because watercolors really force you to to think. A bit more freely. Um, that's the nice part. Okay. Great. Okay, since we're here, we can now maybe add the this man's trousers. He's wearing like this jeans collar trousers. Um, 
I will also add that. Maybe not as intense I have as I have it here. I will definitely try to dilute it a bit more. Um, and I will also use a bit of brown to make it a bit darker. Mm -hmm. And if you want to test your pigments, you can always take your paper towel, right? Just take it in your hand and then you can test it out. You can also grab a small swatch sheet or paper um, like this and you can test the pigments on that as well. Yeah, they will always look a bit different on paper than they look uh, in the box. Definitely, definitely. And when they dry out, they will look differently as well. I truly created a nice color combination. I love it. Thank you. Okay, so now we're gonna start adding the blue, the, the green. And we're gonna use again this light green color and we're gonna use this blue color and maybe a bit of this darker green color. Um, and as we said, first we're gonna apply a, a basic, basic color, which is gonna be a bit lighter green and then we're gonna darker the pigment, dar darken the pigment. So we have some people uh, painting along, we have some people merely sketching along which is also fine and you can color in your sketch later with watercolors. Um, if you're watching this on replay and will paint it as well, yeah, we'd love to see it, we'd love to see all of your works. Uh, you can either post it in our Facebook group, Linescapers, and we'd love to see you there, or on Instagram and tag us. Um, so these are the two ways, uh, so we may see what you have created. Um, yeah, and I'm very curious. Okay, so how far along are you guys? Um, I would love to know. Um, definitely would also love to see your sketches. Um, I'm sure Gaspar will will add the link into the chat. Oh, I definitely will add the link now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when painting, right? I mean, you have probably a bit better angle, angle that, than I have. So um, you can be a bit more precise. Um, if you're using a round brush, something like this, Right, you probably have a lot of precision. Also, if you're using like a synthetic brush, um, this is also very, very useful brush because it always has like a very pointy tip um, and this makes makes it possible to to sketch to sketch a bit um, or paint a bit preciser, even if you're painting under a very funny angle or something. Okay, and now I, I started to add the color. Um, I'm starting deepening my, my pigments. My surfaces are getting a bit more volume now. Um, I'm gonna add it here as well. And if you see here, when it comes to vegetation, it's not like surfaces that are all flat, right? It's always like, it looks almost like points of color there on, on similar places. So that's what we're doing as well. We're just going to add a few of, of points. And because the color is still wet, it's going to bleed in different areas. And this is going to give you some, some feeling of depth and also of this, um, you know, like this, how to say, spontaneity right? and you can always also remove a bit of paint whenever you want that. and we were using this orange color right and right now we don't have any connection between the floor and the top of our painting so what I suggest is also that we take a bit of this orangey color and just do a few spots, a few dots of color here and there. And by that, we will also 
create some sort of connection between between this this frame right that you're trying to create okay we can also color these men's hair that's also something that I noticed Okay, so you can continue this process for a very long time, basically. Um, the good thing is that you can really deepen, if you, if you didn't start too dark, you can deepen the color quite a lot, right? It really depends on how much time do you have to, to express yourself, to focus on details. Um, and you can always do like some sort of individual things and with um, you can use different brushes for coloring in bigger or smaller surfaces um, so you can observe how you're painting how's your painting process so I added here a few additional spots or dots and this makes everything a bit more interesting Okay, maybe we can also go in here. This. Okay, so now we are maybe ready for the second layer of paint. I'm gonna take again the darker color and create a bit more depth. This is really a nice trick, adding paint, uh, like a darker version of the paint you just used to, to create more diversity and texture and everything. Love it. Yeah. It's, it is definitely interesting. Um, and you need to know that as long as the paint is wet, you can always work, work on it and take a bit of paint away or yeah, it's quite a relaxing process. Hmm. Yeah, not always. I mean, it depends if you're in your learning phase or how important are the things that you're sketching. So for some, sketching can also be, or painting can sometimes be also a bit frustrating. I think we all find ourselves sometimes in the phases where, where it's a bit harder, right? We do. And it's also a thing we address in our membership program. Um, besides having sketching tutorials, we also have different exercises that help us with our creative mindset, with letting go of perfectionism, with feeling better, more confident um, about our, our work. So there is things one can do. Yeah, definitely. Um, and it's one thing to learn a technique and then the second thing is to, to master them, right? To make them your own or even connect them with different techniques. That's, that's beautiful, but somehow also hard. And um, I know that sometimes things can get very frustrating. So don't stress too much if the things do not look exactly as you envision them. There's always the next sketch. There's always a next sketch. I love this one. I have to remember this phrase. There's always another sketch. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, this is a perfect mindset for letting go of perfectionism. You know, it's not that important. You can always do another one. And um, yeah, it will never be finished. You know, there's also the saying, like, work is never finished, it's just abandoned. And I think this applies to creative work, definitely. Okay, so we are almost finished, right? So what we're doing right now, we are adding, we are adding this last details, um, last dots, and yeah, I mean, we can always do, we can always add something. Um, I would definitely color the skin of this person um, and then we have these interesting elements on the table and there's also some some elements hanging on the 
on the, the sign just very fast. Let's add just a bit of, of those elements. So we have a comment here, I have to read it out loud. Andrea says, you are awesome guys. You motivated me to start sketching again. Your life is a real treat to me. Um, so glad to hear this. And yeah, if you have any other questions or um, comments about anything, write them in the chat. We'll go in the end uh, a bit to Q&A so we can answer a couple of questions, Sonia, that you got during the stream. A couple of questions about watercolors, about technique. So I'm excited also uh, what you have to say about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. We can do that. Okay, so now you see that without any additional lines, now I just started to paint a few elements. Um, you can always do that. It's also very interesting to combine different techniques, right? Some with outlines where we did a sketch before and then some without. And the best thing is when this dries out, um, you, can, you can still take your fine liner, your pen, your ink pen and add some, some texture, right? That's the beauty in it. You can add those beautiful um, dots, a bit of texture, and then this this sketch or this urban sketch, right? What we try to perceive, it's gonna just feel yours. You know, it's gonna be, it, it's gonna have character. Um, we're not aiming for perfect. We're aiming for information. Yeah, we're aiming for fun. We're aiming for fun. <laughs> right. um, this is a good one. We're not aiming for perfect. We're aiming for good. There's also another quote I like, when you try, when you give up try, trying to be perfect, you can become good. And this is very true with perfectionism and creativity. We try to be perfect and this actually prevents us from becoming really good. So um, yeah, perfectionism definitely something we suffer from. And many of you might also recognize yourself um, in, in this role. Okay. So, is there anything more that we need to add? Oh, I think I think this looks great. I think we can, um, you know, you can let, leave it dry. Maybe later, if you're gonna want to add some details, we could jump now back mm -hmm. while this dries, while people are still painting on and continuing. We give you some more information about our sketching membership program, and then we we'll also do the Q and A and answer your questions that you send us. And yeah, then in the end, let's look at the sketch again and maybe recap on all the things you learned today and you can take with you and uh, try out in the future. Okay, yes, that sounds amazing. Let's do that. Okay. Lisa says, love watching your process makes it easy to follow along. You got it are an inspiration. Thank you, Lisa. <laughs> this is so nice to hear. And nice to see you again in the live stream. Okay, so. Beautiful, Sonia. This was amazing. Maybe uh, you hold it up again, the main camera as well. Um, we'll jump back and look at the top down again uh, in a moment. But yeah, I really think this is uh, great work. So if you enjoyed this process, and if you really like sketching and like this kind of videos, like working with us, we have good news for you. Because we are reopening, or we have just reopened an hour ago, our Creative Compass membership program. And this program will teach more confident sketcher. Yes. So it's not about, it's not just about your skill, right? It's usually also about the mindset and the creativity. And Creative Compass membership has this big library of videos. There's all together 30 different courses that you can take. And these are all different topics that we cover. Um, and since it's holiday season, we decided to reopen the Creative Compass membership with the special offer. Yes. So I'm just dropping the link in the chat. It's also in the description below the video. What is actually Creative Compass? It's a library of courses on sketching like this one, but with going more in depth, with looking at topics on how to draw urban scenes, vegetation, plants and everything. And in addition to that, a lot of fun creative exercises, drawing and sketching exercises that will help you train your creativity and also overcome all those creative blocks 
and challenges that we face like perfectionism, fear of the blank page and stuff like that. Right. So until the end of the season, we are going to have some more live streams. Mm -hmm. We'll tell you when they are in, in the end. And we have decided to give a special offer to you um, watching these live streams with us or doing these live streams with us. Right. So first of all, you get 20% off of this yearly or monthly membership. The second thing, everyone who subscribes in this holiday season is also going to receive a Cardscapes bundle set. Yes. Um, it's car these are the cards that you created basically for the sketchers out there who want to get reminded how to sketch better perspective, landscapes, uh, proportions, composition. You know, sure. everything Drawing tips but some important. postcards, whatever yeah. you need. Yeah. But I think the best part about this Creative Compass membership is also the contact that you get one-on-one -on -one or not one-on-one -on -one with us personally. Once a month, we do feedback sessions with Q&A where you can basically ask us anything. Anything on mindset, creativity, or send in your sketches and we would love to give you feedback. Yeah, it's one thing that you watch the videos with us and it's great and you can learn a lot. But the best thing is if we can actually see what you have created and we have the time with you on a Zoom call to go through and give you the tips to improve. So, yeah, this is also something you get as a member. Right. Nevertheless, we'll do our best to answer also the questions you sent us here today. Um, so we'll go into the Q&A in a minute. Mm -hmm. And you can click on the link, uh, Creative Compass, that it's in the description below. Check it out. Uh, check if it's something for you also put it in the in the live chat so Sonia let's um, maybe I'll switch on the top down again and go a bit through the questions maybe you show um, an example or two mm -hmm. so we have a questions uh, a question from Kirsten is it okay to use a pencil first before using a pen or is it better to use the pen directly in sketching what do you think yes and yes Everything is allowed. You can do whatever you want. Um, it really depends on what you do. So if you do very detailed work and usually I use pencil, if I have a much thicker paper, right? If I'm using like using 300 gram paper and I know that it's going to dry long and I know that I'm going to do nice transition and a lot of wet on wet technique, then I usually go in with a pencil. I do the outlines and then I start applying the color. I do basic wash and then I start to deepen the color. So today I'm using very low quality paper. One of the reasons is also because, um, because usually when you do urban sketching and you have just your normal sketchbook with you, um, you need to compromise on something. Um, and yeah, but still, this is 200 gram watercolor paper. Um, and it, it saves time if you're using a ink pen, right? So it really depends on your speed. It depends on what kind of sketcher you are. Um, how much time do you have? You know, if you have like half an hour and you know that you would like to do one sketch and you need to let it dry for 15 minutes, then you need to be very fast, right? And if you have like an hour, then I know that I can use, I mean, bigger format, thicker paper. Um, I can leave it dry and experiment. I can use different techniques, right, that are also very interesting. Um, the bleeding effect that I mentioned, or sometimes you can also create textures with a lot of splatters or even salt or whatever. I mean, you can be extremely creative while, while you're using watercolors. So um, everything's allowed. So there's also a lot of watercolor tutorials in the membership program, right? Yes, there are a few watercolor tutorials there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we have a question about watercolors from Kirsten as well. Mm -hmm. um, do the watercolors that you are using easily dry up uh, or does it depend on the mixture? And um, what brand are they, if, mm. if you could say something about that? So uh, watercolors... Um, yeah, I know, they can easily dry out. Um, those are very good. Um, I mean, it really depends what you want. 
if you are starting out just with watercolors um, and you are testing out different brands um, I and or maybe even if you say okay I'm not I, I don't even know if that's something that I would like to do in the future then at least buy a student version you know because they usually won't dry out as fast um, the thing is yes it all depends on the mixture the more it cracks, usually that can also mean that it has a lot of chalk inside. Because chalks, chalk makes, um, makes the pigment less intense. It's also a very common used filler for watercolors. Um, and it can also emphasize the, the imbalance between the, the, the binder and the pigment, right? So there can be many reasons why this is happening. But I would presume that uh, it depends on, um, on the quality of the watercolor. So student version or academic version, the academic version is the, the highest version um, or the highest class uh, of the pigment, the highest quality. But the student version is always a very good choice. And if you're like looking to invest, there's a, like a nice tip for you to save money if you're looking to invest into watercolor stationery. Something I learned from Sonia, if you have to, you know, kind of budget your money and say, okay, I'm going to buy, uh, I have to buy paper brushes and watercolors, the number one thing you, sh you should buy that should be high quality is? Paper. Paper. Paper makes a difference. Paper makes a difference. Yeah. Maybe for the next live stream that, that we do, I should use very high quality paper. I think it's going to make the, a lot of difference. But again, today I was using Selenier watercolors. Um, it's it's this brand here. It's a French brand, and um, it's uh, one of the of the elements inside is also honey. Um, honey makes colors more pop out, makes them more intense. So it's an old recipe, and um, yeah, that's that's why I like it as well. It's a bit of tradition. Well, we'll drop uh, the links to those. Uh to our stationery, uh, also to the, in the video description box. And like we said, we would love to have you on board of our membership program. If it's something for you, check it out. And the first, we're going to have live streams until the end of the year. The next one is next Monday. And then after that, check it out on our Instagram page. We'll keep posting a schedule. So linescapes.drawing is our Instagram profile. Um, check it out there and you will see all the live events coming up. Right. So, thank you for joining us today. I hope you sketched and painted something amazing. I would love to see it in our Facebook group community called Linescapers. Go there, post your work. I would love to see it. And till next time, you know what to do. Keep on drawing. And stay creative. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.